<laughs> I Don't love how off. they load up on this spoon. <laughs> I'll grab a net. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. That is fish. a big fish. That is a monster. <laughs> Good job, huh? Whoa. Those chicken spoons this time of year are amazing, eh? Oh, they really are. This is a three quarter ounce Johnson uh, Sprinter spoon, gold. And uh, your wife, Sue, uh, she likes spoon fishing, doesn't she? Oh, yeah, that's her favorite way to get them. Look at the size of that monster. Wow. And how big that fish oh, is. Oh, oops, I lost mine. Oh, you have one on? Oh, yeah, I lost them. Just... That fish there fell, so, I don't know, four and a half, four and three quarter pounds. Pretty good. Well, get this baby back in the water. All right. Very nice. Coming up. On this episode, Bob hooks up with fishing friend Mike Watson for some end of season deep water smallmouth bass on Lake Erie. It's a cold November day, but the action is hot as Bob and Mike spoon up some big ones. Once again, Erie shows why it's a world-class bass fishery. Bob also visits with Phil Reed at Birch Island Resort in Manaki, Ontario to learn about this unique island retreat. Wow. Bum, bum, bum. There we go, boys. That is awesome. Look at that magnificent fish. Way down there. Isn't that sweet? Look at the size of that fish. There he is again. The color is incredible. Yeah, that's a nice one. The Real Fishing Show with Bob Izumi. <laughs> All right. That is a big rainbow trout, Chris. Double headers. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> nice jump. <laughs> yeah. All right. And that is so cool. Another one. There we go. All right. Look at that chunk. Real Fishing is sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. On the Real Fishing Show, we make catch and fish like this a possibility. Oh, there we go. Got him? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All righty. Oh, nice. Well, he's not that big, but it's still. Oh, it's a nice fish. Oh, yeah. I mean, anytime you can get Here, out. You want last, a nut? Last two days of. Oh no, I'm good. Yeah, okay. we're, we're talking about the end of November. And I'm here with my buddy, Mike Watson. Mike and Sue Watson are a couple of the best sticks on the Eastern Basin of Lake Erie. Yeah, you gotta love to enjoy this, All man. All right. Timing's everything when it comes to late season fishing, especially big water angling. The wind finally subsided on Lake Erie on this late November outing with Mike Watson. Since bass season was coming to an end the next day, it was the perfect window for us to give it one last go. Because of the last minute decision to take advantage of the calm conditions, we didn't get on the water till late afternoon, leaving us just a few short hours to fish. When the water temperatures cool down, a jigging spoon in deep water can be dynamite. On this outing, we used a gold splinter spoon. This two and a quarter inch flat profile metal spoon is a fish catching machine. The key to catching these bass was to use a very subtle lift and drop technique, working the spoon no more than six inches off the bottom. Many of the fish were caught pretty well dead sticking or barely moving it. Oh, there we go. You gotta love it when the plan comes together. Is he a big one? A little no, guy. little guy. We're just idling around here and Mike, we marked them on the graph, which is so important, isn't it, to have good electronics? Absolutely. I mean, over the last last decade, the electronics have just come so far. It's just it's just it's just incredible with the down imaging and side imaging, and if you're you're lost if you don't have it. it Especially on big water like Lake Erie. Oh, right? absolutely. Now let's see. Oh, there's a fish on bottom. Oh, yeah. My turn. You go away. They're all so big. When we return, Bob and Mike spoon up more big bass action on Erie. Stay tuned. Closed captioning is brought to you by BoaterExam.com. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Toro. Count on it. 
During the course of underwater filming, we've recorded a few strange things along the way. Despite our steadfast beliefs, fish do their best to prove us wrong. Nearly every angler will claim, if you have weeds on your line, you won't catch a thing. Granted, it may affect the action of your bait or lure, yet we recorded numerous instances where fish didn't care. The list includes panfish, trout, bass, and many others. In some cases, fish may even prefer a little salad with dinner. When it comes to feeding, there's little doubt that fish ingest anything that gets in the way. Next time you keep one for dinner, check the stomach contents. Whatever you're after, don't be afraid of working deep into cover. Another misconception is the minimum distance to place sinkers above a bait. Steelheaders are absolute fanatics, claiming up to a half meter to avoid spooking fish. We conducted a study on this, moving several large split shot closer and closer to the bait. This under difficult conditions, in front of an underwater camera no less. Then we took it to the extreme, and guess what happened? Bottom line is, with every new discovery in fishing, we realize how much is yet to be learned. Oh, there we go. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that something? I love it. Oh, oh. Good one. <laughs> I got it. You, you keep fishing, em? yep. Yeah. Man, they're all oh, look at that fish. They're all so big. This time of year, Mike. Wow, isn't that just fantastic? It really isn't. Oh, look at the marks down there. These, uh, look at that. We're going to get another one here in a second, I believe. <laughs> They're all just like big, giant smallmouth, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't beat it. This is when they do their feed bag for the, for the wintering. You know, the funny thing is, I learned how to spoon fish from yourself and your wife, Sue, because I used to fish it pretty aggressively. So right now I'm just, you know, hitting this uh, Revo reel, letting it get right down to the bottom. Okay, so I'm on bottom now. And I used to Rip pop it. it off the bottom. Yeah. And I'd get some fish, but boy, when it gets into this cold weather uh, period, and yeah, cold they, water. They, it, they, they like that spoon just ticking off the bottom. Oh, there was a little miss. Yeah, but I, I'm I, talking about just letting it down to the bottom and then lifting it up a couple of inches. That's all you need to do. What do you call it? Spoon tickling? Or? Uh, <laughs> there was another one. You got to be quick. Many lures can be adapted for multi species, especially a spoon like the Johnson Splinter. The following week after I was on Erie with Mike Watson, I was fishing the mouth of the Niagara River on the Canadian side of Lake Ontario. It was December 2nd, and I was with guide Frank DiMarcantonio. Frank had an idea to go for the Grand Slam of Trout, Rainbows, Browns, and Lakers. We started out with the lake trout, and once again, the spoon was on fire. Unlike the subtle approach Mike and I used for the smallmouth, a more aggressive jigging technique was really working to fire up these lake trout in the heavy current. Well, you Frank, up? you were just literally still setting up, and yeah. I thought I'd lower down this Johnson uh, splinter spoon to see if they'll hit it, and you said try a spoon. And here we are on Lake Ontario, <laughs> now I'm catching lakers. So the season just opened up, what, December 1st? That's right, yeah. The Canadian season opens December uh, 1st and the American January 1st. Wow, these things fight hard, man. Yeah, they sure do. Bulldog. Um, they're just finishing their spawn, Bob. They're moving back out of the river, so they're really hungry, and they're stacked out here on the bar. Man, I'm telling you, this thing <laughs> just thumped it. And you never know. It could be a brown, too, Bob. There's browns out here, too. There's some really big browns. Yeah, right. it's a big laker. So, uh, yeah, there's the first part of your Grand Slam there, Bob. All right. So if you want, we can go. No, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Easy now. That was my first drop with a spoon. Uh -huh. Just adjusting that drag. Oh, yeah, there we are. Okay. I can't believe how hard these things fight. Uh, death roll. Got him. All righty. That's a good one, eh? Very sweet. Look at that thing. Yeah, that's they a, are pretty fish. That's a good sized fish. That's so cool. You watch that graph and as soon as it drops off. I'm trying to double up here. Let's see. You need me to get the... Uh, oh, oh wow. my goodness. Look at the size of that thing. Whoa, it's a wallower. <laughs> that is a giant. Look at the size of that smallmouth. 
<laughs> oh, that's uh, definitely five plus. <laughs> Look at that thing. Wow. Very cool. Excellent. Good job, Bob. The old splinter spoon. Yeah. Look at that thing. I don't even want to weigh it because I know that it, it, it is in that range, you oh, know? Absolutely. Look at that thing. Just a monster. Wow. Look at that. Nice brown slab. That was so cool, Mike. I, I looked on that graph and it just dropped into like 26, 27 feet of water. And bang. And there's a lot of fish down there. Just another day at the office for Bob, spoon fishing on Erie, and a trip to Birch Island Resort in Manaki, Ontario. This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman, the outdoor company. Hey, I'm here with fishing guide Frank DiMarcantonio on the Niagara River, and Frank's been guiding for many, many years. And uh, Frank, let's show the viewers something that you'll do with a GPS unit. This is a Lorentz uh, sonar GPS. Uh, we've got the Navionics mapping on the left side, and uh, of course the sonar graph on the right side. Okay, so basically what I do is, on any new body of water, I'm going to map this, the area that I want to fish. And mostly it's going to give me reference points. So what I did here was there's a, a flat here. Um, on the right side, we've got like, you know, 50, 60, 100 feet of water. And on the, on the left side of those waypoints is a shelf. And I've marked the drop off. So now when we start making drifts, I know how close I can get to that drop off without going over the drop off right and wasting time yep. right and then as you're as you're fishing it and you're catching fish then you're going to mark those spots because they could be gravel bars or a rock or something that's going to hold fish mm -hmm. and uh, it just gives you a really good reference point and uh, it makes uh, life a lot easier and more fishing more efficient so on the river here you're basically just plotting out your drift uh, so that you don't get on the outside which is really deep on this particular area and you can do this for any species of fish can't yeah you? yeah we do it on Erie we do shoals we do uh, edges and stuff yeah. from hard to soft right well by mapping it out and putting waypoints along in conjunction with the Navionics mapping and then looking on your graph you've really got it covered don't you yeah it makes it makes things a lot more efficient well, if you want to get out with Frank, Frank is a guide on Lake Erie and on the Niagara River, and it's niagarasportfishing.ca, right? Correct, right. All right. All right. Well, thanks a bunch, Frank. Appreciate it, man. Oh, no problem. You feel you have more control with the spinning outfit, do you? Absolutely. I think it drops quicker. You can keep the line more vertical. I think when it's calm like this, it's... Whoa, there's one. Uh, when it's calm like this, it's not as uh, not as big as an issue. But you know, and the reason I choose a, a bait cast outfit for spoon fishing is just more power. When I do get one, uh, oh look at that! Oh yeah. Oh, this nice. one's not that big, but it's still <laughs> nice. Oh, I missed one. Did you? Wow. Oh. Just a little three pounder, but still. Yeah, a little. <laughs> yeah, a little. But we're spoiled out here. What did I say? Yeah. Wow, what a beautiful day. Another day at the office. Oh, I wish I had that kind of office. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too shabby, I'll tell you that right now, I can, I can, Mr. Watson. <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> I'm enjoying it right now, trust me. <laughs> good company, good fish. Yeah. Good chicken spoons. I hear you. The fishing opportunities are endless here in the province of Ontario. On a recent trip to Ontario Sunset Country in the northwestern part of the province, I took some time out to visit longtime friend Phil Reed. The Reed family have been involved in the lodge business for about as long, if not longer, than anybody in Canada. Here's what he had to say about his latest venture. I'm standing on a small island with an old friend of mine, Phil Reed. Phil, good to have you on the show. Thank you, Bob. Good to have you here. You know what? You've been in the lodge business since the 40s with your family, and I've been to uh, all kinds of great places with you. But today, we're on somewhere new. This is an island that's been around for a long time, and it's Birch Island Resort in northwestern Ontario on the Winnipeg River system, just outside of Menaki, which I can see over right. there. Yeah. And this is a new venture for you, Phil. Brand new. Uh, you guys are the uh, first guests here. Uh, 
that we're testing out. How's that? <laughs> well, you're going to officially be open in 2014. Yes. And here it is. It's a beautiful October day. And uh, we got up here last night. Well, actually, yesterday afternoon, we got out for some fish. And I actually have Miss Canada 2009, Shannon Smadella. Uh, with me and, and Shannon and I were out having some fun fishing last night yeah. and uh, we had a great meal and I know once you're open you're going to have an executive chef here. Yeah we got we got him all lined up uh, we're opening uh, May 15th next yes. year and we'll be running to uh, through till October 15th. Sweet. Um, so the last couple of weeks has been more of getting uh, ready and prepared for next season and we had the opportunity to have uh, you know you and Wayne and the rest of the people up and it's it's been a fantastic day. Well I'll tell you what the uh, the fishing up here is world-class fishing. You're talking musky, walleye, bass, pike. It's on the Winnipeg River system. And uh, this is gonna be an executive retreat or a trip of a lifetime type right. place. You're gonna offer a very high-end outdoor experience here on Birch Island. And it's gonna be called Reed's Birch Island Resort. Yes, it is. Yeah, uh, what, we, what we've done is everything we've learned over the last 50 years and 14 resorts, we're, we're putting all here. Um, you can see uh, there's quite a bit of heritage here. The original lodge building and uh, boathouse was built in 1918 wow. by a director of the Eaton family for, for entertaining executives and, and customers. Now, how did they get here back then? Those days it was train. The, the CN uh, Railway came through here. Right. And uh, this was a stopover, and this was the only way to get to this part of the country. Well, I'll tell you, this place is rich with heritage. It's got so much character, and I can't wait to come when you're officially open. But I have to admit, I'm honored, Phil, that you had us <laughs> up here last night to check it out. So folks, if you're looking for a great place to come in northwestern Ontario, just outside of Menaki, actually within sight of Menaki, yep. Ontario, you got to come up here and check out Reed's Birch Island Resort. When we return, late season fishing tactics for deep water bass that produce big results. Stay tuned. Oh, there's one. Nice. And how's he feel? Oh, it feels like a very big fish. Does it? Oh yeah. But I mean, they all do this time of year. They just. Oh, oh that's goodness. a big fish. That's a big one. Oh, whoa. He's going around. He's I don't going. think he likes that spoon in his mouth. Oh, oh that's yeah. a good one. That's a big fish. It's funny, you know, this this time of year, these digging spoons, they. It, it, it's a great technique, but it seems to only work in that in that certain temperature range. Uh, we get that you know 57 degrees down down to about uh, 42, 41 degrees, and then after that it kind of fizzles off for so us. So too cold, it's not good, and too warm, it's, it's not good. good. Yeah, you, when it gets water's warmer, obviously the drop shot is awesome. is, is excellent, excellent way to go. But yeah. But this time of year, the chicken spoon, you can't beat it. When they're on the bite, oh, man, there's, there's no other technique better. Bob's onto one now. Look. <laughs> you a big one? I don't know. Uh, he's under the boat. Oh, he's I guess a... I should be on the trolling motor. Uh, he's a... yeah, I, I, think, I think it is a big one. Oh, where is he? Oh, man. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, nice, nice one. <laughs> Gold Johnson spoon. I use so many bait cast outfits with my largemouth fishing, you know, that I'm very comfortable using them for this technique. But I watch you, uh, you've got a lot of control with that spinning outfit, don't yeah. you? I'm not accustomed to using bait casters out here in open waters. Yeah, I probably, for uh, my largemouth fishing, I'm using a bait caster about 80, 90% of the time. So this is just. Uh, Pretty normal having this outfit in my hand. Feels great. You know, one of the things, Mike, you want something on the bottom like a break or maybe uh, a change in the bottom contour or a little bit of bumpiness, right? Oh yeah, you need, you, I always try to find him. Once you get to learn your electronics more, I'm not just talking about the, the GPS. And looking at the fish finder itself, you. You, once you get to learn an area and fish it more and learn your electronics more, you can tell when you're on a soft and a hard bottom and those fish will actually you, will use that as a roadway. Yeah, uh, so it could you, be you, not even really a change in depth, just a, uh, a change in a hard from, to a soft bottom. Right? Absolutely, from sand to gravel or gravel to rock and, and you've got the perfect recipe for big smallies. Alrighty. Well, 
either I catch one to end the show or or you catch one. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. There it is. Woohoo! Yeah. Man, and the sun is going down, and I'm thinking, wouldn't it be nice to catch one more? Oh, oh that's man. a big fish. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to. Oh, that's a big fish. We need to net that one. Yeah, you can just net him right here for me. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we end the day with a five-pound-plus momo. Oh, that's a beauty. And where is the spoon? Did he eat it or yeah. what? Oh, he took it. Look at that. Oh, my fingers are so cold. You need a Look at that. Oh, that's Look a beautiful Look at that big fish. fatty. Wow. It seems like you always do that, Bob. <laughs> I always do. I'm not, not always. <laughs> Closing the show, and it's an excellent fish, man. Oh, man, it's been Go caught before. Has that got a Watson mark on it? Well, probably, but who knows? <laughs> it's been caught before. Big, fat, Lake Erie, late season small ones. Mike, thanks a bunch, man. You're Great. awesome, Mike. I mean, you and Sue have, have showed me some excellent fishing out, uh, out here over the years. And uh, folks, what can I say? Late season Lake Erie smallmouth fishing on a jigging spoon. Wow, nice job, Bob. Tickling the jigging spoon. It's the Watson technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> this is a big fish. That is a fish of a lifetime. <laughs> Well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> Woo that was too cool. Oh, man, what a fish. Look at that. <laughs>